Hello everyone, I am Satya Sekhar, a developer advocate with Salesforce. Today, I will show you how you can get started with Lighting Web Components. Before I begin, I want to give a quick reminder that customers should base their purchasing decisions on products and services that are currently available. I thank everyone present here today who are watching the video and all the trailblazers for whatever you do to make the platform awesome. As this session is for beginners, let's start with a question. What are Lighting Web Components? If you have ever used HTML, you might be aware of the tags like HTML, Head, Body, Title, H1, etc. These are the standard elements or standard tags. You can create your own custom elements with Lighting Web Components. You can define your own tags. For example, you want to show the contact information in a tile you can create an element for that and use it. So, Lighting Web Components are custom elements built using HTML and modern JavaScript. These custom elements can also be called custom components. I also want to mention one important note here. When referring to the Lighting Web Components documentation, you might see Lighting Web Components is written in two different formats. If you see all the first letters of the word capitalized as in this left side box, it means we are referring to the Lighting Web Components framework itself, a modern open source UI framework. If you see only the first word capitalized, then we are referring to the actual components built using the framework. Now let's see how Lighting Web Components work. Salesforce provides base Lighting Web Components that can be used as building blocks for your custom experiences. These base Web Components include the basic elements like inputs, buttons, avatars, badges, etc. The benefit of base components is it gives users a consistent look and feel and simplify your development experience. You can use these base components to build experience components. The example experience components are a related list, product explorer, charter feed, etc. Once you have built experience components, you can use those components in lighting pages. And not only that, you can also customize the pages and the components as per your requirements. Salesforce provides a tool called Lightning App Builder for building the pages and customizing the components in the pages. You can use the Lightning App Builder to dynamically build the pages by dragging and dropping both standard and custom components. Standard components are the experience components which are provided out of the box by the platform while you can build your own custom components. Before we jump into the demo, let's see what a typical Lightning Web Component can contain. You can define the user interface using a HTML file. You can write your component's logic in a JavaScript file. If you are building a utility component to be used by other components, then this is the only file required. Optionally, you can create your own styles for your component using a CSS file. If you want to use the component on Salesforce platform, you can define the configurations in an XML file. You can also optionally define the icon for the component using an SVG file. This icon will be visible in the Lightning App Builder. Salesforce provides modern developer tools to build Lightning Web Components. You can use Visual Studio Code, a lightweight IDE, or you can try our latest web-based development environment code builder. Both have similar user interface and tools. You can also use Salesforce CLI with both of these environments. Today, we'll use Visual Studio Code for our demo. So, let's go ahead and code. Here, I am in Visual Studio Code. You can install the Salesforce Extensions Pack, which contains the necessary tools and features that can be used to build any app on the platform. I have created a project and connected it to a Salesforce app. You can check this quick start to learn how to create a Salesforce development project. Let's now create our very first component. We can create Lighting Web Component from the Command Palette. Let's launch Command Palette. We can launch it by clicking Menu, View and Command Palette. Or you can also use the shortcut keys like Command Shift P on Mac or Control Shift P on Windows. Let's type sfdx and you can see a list of commands to use Salesforce tools. Let's type create lighting 
and select create lightning web component it launches a wizard where we can give the component name the component name should begin with a small case letter and use camel case if the name has multiple words let's call our component say hello world let's accept default folder you can see that we have created our first component just like that on the left side in the file explorer you can see that it has created a html file a javascript file and a meta xml file every ui component must have an html file with the root tag template you can write all your html code between these template tags when the component renders the template tag gets replaced with the component's name we are going to see that in a moment Let's create a h2 tag and write hello world in it. Now let's see the JavaScript file. Every component must have a JavaScript file. JavaScript files in Lighting Web Components are ES6 modules. If the component renders UI, the JavaScript file defines the HTML element. If the component is a service component or library, the JavaScript file exports functionality to be used by other components. Today, We'll be creating a UI component and this is the minimum code required. Core module in Lightning Web Components is LWC. Here we are importing Lightning element from the LWC module. Lightning element is a custom wrapper of the standard HTML element. We are extending this Lightning element to create a Lightning Web Component. We can configure to use this component in a Salesforce or what you can do is in the configuration file, we can set is exposed to true to make it available in the Lightning App Builder. We can also selectively expose the components in app pages, home pages, etc. by setting the targets in the config file. Let's expose this component to a home page. Let's right click on our component and select SFDX deploy source to org. You can also do this from command palette or even CLI. You can see that it deployed successfully. Now we can open the org by clicking the open org button at the bottom. We can use a component on the home page of any app. Let's open the sales app home page. We can edit this page by clicking this gear icon and edit page. It launches the app builder. On the left side of the app builder, you can see all the available components, both the standard and custom components. We can find our component under custom components. Let's drag and drop it. Let's save and activate it. You can activate the page as default at org level, app level, or even profile level. Let's select SN as org default and save. Now let's go back and check the app page and see how it works. You can see that it shows the component. Let's inspect it. And here you can see our HTML code. You can also notice that the template tag is replaced with the component's name. The component name is shown in kebab case in the namespace hyphen component name format. We haven't used any namespace, so it uses default namespace C for custom component. We just built our first component. Let's now see where we can find easy to learn examples. You can visit developer.salesforce.com website. You can find code samples and SDKs under build tab. You can search for LWC recipes. This app has a collection of easy to digest code examples for Lightning Web Components. Almost all the recipes are built with less than 30 lines of code. You can find a recipe for specific tasks, starting with a basic Hello World example to the most advanced use cases. Let's go and check it. This repository has a readme file with step-by-step -step easy to follow instructions to install the application. You can deploy the application, see how it works and learn from there. 
I have already deployed the application by following the instructions in this readme. And here I am in the deployed LWC recipes app. You can see that this app has various tabs, each tab showing a specific type of example. For instance, the Hello tab has some basic examples. Apex tab has examples where Apex code is involved. Similarly, Child to Parent and Parent to Child have component communication examples. Here in Hello tab, you can see an example similar to the component we just created. Let's take a look at a slightly more sophisticated component now. Here the user can enter a name in the input field and you can see the name change dynamically in the output. Let's look at the code. The hello class has a property named greeting initialized to world. Now let's take a look at the HTML file. Here you can see that we are using the pre-built base component lightning card tag for the layout. As I said before, we can use base components to build experience components. To bind a component property like greeting here to an HTML element, use the simple brace syntax or bracket syntax. The properties are reactive by nature, which means that when the greeting property changes, the template automatically re-renders to show the new value in the HTML view. You can also see I have used one more base component for input where we entered the name. You can refer to the examples, documentation and specification of the base components in the component library. You can see the preview of the base component and also a mini playground where you can dynamically modify the example and see how it works. When the user types a new value in the input field, it fires an event which is handled by the handle change listener. If you see in the JavaScript file, the handle change method updates the greeting property. And then that greeting property is rendered in the HTML view. Let's now see how we can access data. Let's take a look at the recipe apex wire method with params. Here, we retrieve a contact by searching using an Apex method. Apex is an object-oriented programming language used on Salesforce to work with data. How many lines of code do you think we'll need for this? Let's take a look. Here, we are in contact controller class which has find contacts method that takes a search key and implements a simple SQL method. You can also notice this method is annotated with cacheable equals true. Why? I'll show you in a moment. Let's now look at the component code. All you have to do is to import the find contacts method as a JavaScript module. And then you can wire the method to a property using at wire. How does this work? The find contacts method is invoked when the component is rendered and the result is stored in the contacts property. Also, the search key is reactive, which means whenever its value changes, the method is automatically invoked. So whenever you have a new search string, the wire method is invoked and the result is stored in the contacts. And then that contacts is rendered in your HTML view. Before I finish this session, I also like to show you the significance of cacheable equals true. For that, let's go back to the browser and bring up the Chrome developer tools and monitor the performance on network tab. Let's search for Amy. You can notice that it takes more than 300 milliseconds to get the contact information from the server. Okay, let's now search for Michael. It also takes similar time, which is okay. Now, Let's again search for Amy. You can notice that I got the information, but the request is not sent to the server. This time it got it from the cache. And that was because we use cacheable equals true in the annotation. You can see the significant performance. 
This was one of the many benefits of using Lightning Web Components. How can you get started with Lightning Web Components today? You can follow these four simple steps. Start with Quick Start Batch on Trailhead. Explore the code with Lightning Web Components recipes. Leverage the component library and LWC developer guide to deep dive into the concepts. And finally, check out the Lightning Web Components sample apps. If you have more questions, you can directly message me on social channels or post in the comment section. Thank you for attending or watching this session.